Cubix, which stands for the CubeSat Imaging X-ray Solar Spectrometer, is a CubeSat, a small satellite. In our case, it's about the size of two shoe boxes put together, or maybe the size of a boot box. And it's going to go up into space and look at X-rays coming off of the sun, specifically coming off of solar flares and the solar atmosphere called the corona. Cubix leverages a couple of new technologies that some of them have flown in space before, some of them haven't. For the instruments that we're using, one of them is called MOXIE, the Multi-Order X-ray Spectral Image. MOXIE is being built at Goddard, NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center. MOXIE, it's a soft X-ray camera, so it images the sun in soft X-ray wavelengths between 10 and 60 angstroms, so so one and five nanometers. And it does that using a simple pinhole camera. And that allows us to uh, take an image of the full sun in multiple different soft X-ray wavelengths um, all at the same time. It also incorporates a diffraction grating, which takes the light that comes through a few of the pinholes and spreads them out into different wavelengths so that we can diagnose things like temperature and the abundance of the plasma on the sun. That energy range is very important for understanding the origins of these hot plasmas and MOXIE is going to show that it can be done on a relatively straightforward and small package. A CubeSat is a is sort of a good test bed for understanding these, these data products. It's an observing mode that has been used in quite a number of years and because we have so many images of the sun overlapping itself. We have to use new and novel techniques for sort of unfolding the solar spectra. And so a CubeSat allows us to take these kind of new novel kinds of data on a smaller budget and to pass these new techniques for, for understanding these data products. What we'd like to see in the future is a much bigger version, scaled up version of MOXIE that can take these measurements to a much further step. And so not only is MOXIE itself going to return science, we see it as a pathfinder for a much more full-fledged instrument in the future. A CubeSat is a small satellite, but it has all of the same different parts as a big satellite. We're getting all of these from different partners. The spacecraft itself is being built by our partners called Astro Digital. They're based in California, and they're putting together all of the structural components. Basically having one panel of our CubeSat facing the sun, like most of the time in orbit, definitely created a Pretty interesting challenge for the actual digital team. Because this precisely requirement, we start exploring these uh, sun synchronous orbits that are called uh, dawn fast orbits. It's a very unique orbit because you are always facing the same size of the satellite to the sun. So it's kind of like a constant generation of heat on that panel that needs to be transferred to a different part of the satellite. In result, we came to a pretty interesting packed um, bus design really compact uh, with our core components in it, fit perfectly in it. Spaceflight missions have a lot of moving parts and managing a lot of the partners and vendors, making sure everyone's talking to each other and staying on schedule is definitely a tough job. We have a lot of documents to make sure that things are designed properly. We have a lot of meetings with different members of the team to make sure that if there are questions that need to be answered, they're getting answered and that the teams can talk to each other. And then we have our overall requirements documents to make sure that everything that we said we're going to do, we can actually do with all of our instruments. Each instrument has their own individual test procedure that we will do to make sure that they're functioning properly after we get them. Take it to uh, a vacuum chamber and take it through uh, what we call TVAC cycles. So it gets very cold, it gets very hot, and then we make sure it still works. And then we do that again and again and again. The scary test is more the vibe test. That one's a lot quicker. We bolt it onto a plate and then shake the crap out of it in a bold attempt to mimic what the rocket's gonna do to it. Our spacecraft is very simple. It's very passive. We don't have any propulsion, but we do have uh, moving parts in the form of reaction reels that help orient the spacecraft. So once we get launched up into orbit, uh, we just get deployed at the altitude that they tell us we get deployed at, and then we wait. Cubix's primary goal is to look at solar flares. These are the most powerful explosions in the solar system. They release the equivalent of 
a billion hydrogen bombs in the span of just a few minutes. That's more energy than all of humanity will use for 20,000 years in the time span of just a few minutes. It's mind boggling. We're going to go on the TSIS-2 mission and we're gonna get launched as a secondary. Right now, that launch is predicted to be in late 2025. So hopefully we'll be up from late 2025 all the way through at least late 2026 to observe the sun near the peak of its activity cycle.